My name is Marcus Childress, and I'm an investigative counsel for the Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. Supremacist Go ahead. Why, and white supremacist. Would you like me to condemn? White Proud supremacist boys. and right Proud, Proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. Uh, after he made this comment, Enrique Terrio, then chairman of the Proud Boys, said on Parler, "Standing by, sir." During our investigation, we learned that this comment during the presidential debate actually led to an increase in membership from the Proud Boys. Would you say that Proud Boys members increased after the stand back, stand by comment? Exponentially. I'd say tripled, probably, with the potential for a lot more eventually. And did you ever sell any stand back and stand by merchandise? Uh, one of the vendors on my page actually beat me to it, but I wish I would have. I wish I would have made a stand back, stand by shirt. On December 19th, President Trump tweeted about the January 6th rally and told attendees, be there, we'll be wild. Many of the witnesses that we interviewed were inspired by the president's call and came to D.C. for January 6th. But the extremists, they took it a step further. They viewed this tweet as a call to arms. A day later, the Department of Justice describes how the Proud Boys created a chat called the Ministry of Self-Defense Leadership Chat. Uh, in this chat, the Proud Boys established a command structure in anticipation of coming back to D.C. on January 6th. The Department of Justice describes Mr. Tario coming into possession of a document called the 1776 Returns, which describes uh, individuals occupying key buildings around the United States Capitol. The Oath Keepers are another group that the committee investigated. You better get your ass to D.C., folks, this Saturday. Yeah, if you don't, there's, there'll be no more republic. But we're not going to let that happen. It's not even an if. It's, it's either President Trump is encouraged and, and bolstered and strengthened to do what he must do, or we wind up in a, in a bloody fight. We all know that. The fight's coming. The Oath Keepers began planning to block the peaceful transfer of power shortly after the November 3rd election. And according to the Department of Justice, Stuart Rhodes, the Oath Keepers' leader, said to his followers that we were not going to get through this without a civil war. In response to the December 19th, 2020 tweet by President Trump, the Oath Keepers focused on January 6th in Washington, D.C. In response to the tweet, one member, the president of the Florida chapter, put on social media, the president called us to the Capitol. He wants us to make it wild. The goal was for the Oath Keepers to be called to duty so that they could keep the president in power, although President Trump had just lost the election. The committee learned that the Oath Keepers set up quick reaction forces outside of the city in Virginia where they stored arms. The goal of these quick reaction forces was to be on standby just in case President Trump invoked the Insurrection Act. Did the Oath Keepers ever provide weapons to members? I'm going to decline to answer that. I put them on grounds for, for uh, and due process grounds. In footage obtained by the committee, we learned that on the night of January 5th, Enrique Tario and Stuart Rhodes met in a parking garage in Washington, D.C. There's mutual respect there. I think we're, we're fighting the same fight, and I think that's what's important. The committee learned that the Oath Keepers went into the Capitol through the east doors in two stack formations. The DOJ alleges that one of the stacks went into the Capitol looking for Speaker Pelosi, although they never found her. As the attack was unfolding, Mr. Tario took credit. In documents obtained by the Department of Justice, Mr. Tario said in an encrypted chat, make no mistake, and we did this. Later on that evening, Mr. Tario even posted a video which seemed to resemble him in front of the Capitol with a black cape. And the title of the video was Premonition. The evidence developed by the Select Committee and the Department of Justice highlights how each group participated on the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. In fact, the investigation revealed that it was individuals associated with the Proud Boys who instigated the initial breach at the Peace Circle at 12.53 p.m. <laughs> Within 10 minutes, rioters had already filled the Lower West Plaza. By 2 o'clock, rioters had reached the doors on the West and the East Plazas. And by 2.13, rioters had actually broken through the Senate wing door and gotten into the Capitol building. A series of breaches followed. At 2.25 p.m., rioters breached the East Side doors to the Rotunda. And then right after 2.40 p.m., rioters breached the east side doors near the Ways and Means Room. Once the rioters infiltrated the Capitol, they moved through the crypt, the rotunda, 
the hallways leading to the house chambers and even inside the senate chambers.